Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar on Small Business Basics. My name is Andrea Lang. I work with new vendors and act as a small business coordinator. Joining me is my counterpart, Diana Dal David. And today we're going to provide some insight into this world of small business and how it relates to government contracting. So for today's agenda, we're going to go over the definition of a small business and how it relates to the North American Identification Classification Systems, otherwise known as NAICS codes. We'll review some small business set-asides. Afterwards, we'll discuss the different socioeconomic categories and the small business administration resources that are available to you. Last, but certainly not least, We'll go over any questions you may have. So before we jump into small business, let's take a look at some key definitions to remember. First is the Small Business Administration or SBA. And the SBA was created in 1953 and is the only cabinet level federal agency fully dedicated to small businesses and provides counseling, capital and contracting expertise. Next is the North American Industry Classification System or NAICS codes. So NAICS codes are an economic classification system. You would select the code that best depicts your primary business. Size standards define the largest size a business can be to participate in small business set-asides. Standards can either be the number of employees or the average annual receipts of a company. Socioeconomic categories are specific small business categories, such as woman-owned small business, veteran-owned small business, service-disabled veteran-owned small business, hub zones, 8A firms, and more. Next, we have SAM, or System for Award Management, which is a federal government-owned and operated free website. Every vendor who wants to participate in a federal government procurement must be registered in SAM. And you would also self-certify in SAM if you are a small business. And last, we have the master solicitation. Now this is a commodity procurement term. So the AMS master solicitation for commodity procurements is the main body of every contract awarded by AMS. It details the federal acquisition regulation commonly referred to as FAR, and includes clauses and provisions governing federal procurements, such as financial capabilities, small business subcontracting, pre-bid certifications, product traceability, and more. All right, so what defines a small business? Well, it depends on a number of factors, starting with the NAICS code. The NAICS code you use will have a size standard, either an employee size or a dollar amount of the average of annual receipts. You can review the SBA table of size standards, which lists all the NAICS codes and size standards affiliated with them. But commodity procurement has an easier way to find your business size. The specific NAICS codes that commodity procurement uses can be found on our master solicitation. Please use these specific NAICS codes when registering in SAM. To make sure each agency is effectively working with small businesses, the department established business goals. Currently, the USDA small business goal is 47%, meaning 47% of contracts should be awarded to small businesses. And I am happy to report that this past fiscal year, fiscal year 2022, AMS has not only achieved this goal, we surpassed it, awarding 49% of our contracts to small businesses. So on your screen is a NAICS code table that can be found on our master solicitation, as I previously mentioned. All of the NAICS codes that Commodity Procurement uses have size standards based on the number of employees. On the far left column, you will find the description of the commodity. The second column from the right lists the NAICS code, 
And the column on the far right is the number of employees. So for example, a canned vegetable vendor would use a NAICS code 311421. And to be considered a small business, the company should have 1,000 employees or less. A few NAICS code tips. Make sure you are using the right NAICS codes when you register in SAM. If your company manufactures multiple products, then you can have multiple NAICS codes. NAICS codes and their size standards are, are used by commodity procurement to determine specific contractual requirements, such as set-asides and subcontracting. So once again, please, please, please choose the right NAICS code when you register in SAM. So now that we are all experts on NAICS codes and self-registering as a small business, let's talk about small business set-asides. So to establish any set-aside, we must have the rule of two. What is the rule of two? Well, according to FAR section 19, there must be at least two small businesses with the capacity to provide product in order to create a set-aside. All set-aside authority is determined by the FAR or the Agricultural Acquisition Regulation, commonly referred to as the AGAR. For example, we can create a set aside for a veteran owned small business on a whim. There are regulations we must abide by, otherwise we would be in violation of the competition requirements in the FAR that come for the Competition and Contracting Act. Now currently, commodity procurement has set asides for small businesses, service disabled veteran owned small businesses, woman owned small businesses, hub zones and 8A firms. Hub zones and 8A firms are a little different in that we don't need to have two hub zones or two 8As to provide assistance to vendors. Single hub zones can compete for a contract and receive what's called hub zone price preference. And 8A firms can submit 8A offers on contracts. A few set aside tips for you. On October 1st, which is the start of every fiscal year, commodity procurement establishes a set aside list for all of our commodities. But even with that, set asides are subject to change throughout the year. And while we don't keep a list of our set asides that are listed in, um, while we don't keep a list of our set asides regularly available on our website, they are listed in the bid invitation. Okay, so now I'm going to switch off to my counterpart, Diana, who will go more in depth about the different socioeconomic bis small business types and small business resources. Take it away, Diana. Thanks, Andrea. Well, apart from being a small business, there are other more specific small business types that fall into socioeconomic categories. Unlike the cell certification for small businesses in SAM, in order to become certified for the majority of these special business types, you must register with SBA. On your screen here, you see we have a chart that specifies the registration for each category. We will be going over the specific business types in the next few slides. If you are a small disadvantaged business, you may self-certify in SAM. However, your company must meet the following criteria, which is set by the Code of Federal Regulations. Your company must be 51% or more owned and controlled by one or more disadvantaged persons. The disadvantaged person or persons must be socially disadvantaged and economically disadvantaged. Your company must be small according to SBA's size standards. Similar to the small business category, there are other categories that fall under this small disadvantaged business category, such as 8A firms. While commodity procurement does not have set-asides for small disadvantaged businesses, we do allow for 8A set-asides and 8A offers. 
Currently, USDA has a goal of 21.5% for small disadvantaged businesses, which include 8A firms. The 8A Business Development Program is an SBA established program where businesses will receive training and technical assistance to economically strengthen businesses to better compete in government contracts and the commercial industry. In order to qualify, you must be a small business, you must not have previously participated in the 8A program, must be at least 51% owned and controlled by US citizens who are socially and economically disadvantaged, must have a personal net worth of $750,000 or less, adjusted gross income of $350,000 or less, and assets, assets totaling $6 million or less. You must also demonstrate good character and must demonstrate the potential for success, such as having been in business for two years. The 8A certification lasts for a maximum of nine years. The first four years are considered a developmental stage, and the last five years are considered a transitional stage. In order to apply, please visit certify.sba.gov. Again, that is certify.sba.gov. You can also get monthly assistance on the third Wednesday of each month from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. During that time, members of the 8A team answer questions to help firms navigate the certification process, including program benefits and eligibility requirements for 8A certification. Additionally, you can also email questions to 8A questions at sba.gov. Again, that is 8A questions at sba.gov. Remember, commodity procurement allows for single 8A firms to submit 8A offers and 8A set asides for two or more 8A firms. There is no USDA goal for 8A firms. Rather, 8A firms are included under the small disadvantage business goal. Now, in terms of the HUBZone program, this is another program that is run by SBA. HUBZone stands for Historically Underutilized Business Zones. SBA has a HUBZone map where you can enter your address and determine if your company is in a HUBZone. You will need to recertify your company as a HUBZone every year. To qualify for the HUBZone program, your company must be a small business according to SBA size standards. It must be at least 51% owned and controlled by US citizens, a community development corporation, an agricultural cooperative, an Alaska Native corporation, a Native Hawaiian organization, or an Indian tribe. It must have the principal office located in a hub zone, and it must have at least 35% of the employees living in a hub zone. USDA has an established hub zone goal of 3%, and commodity procurement allows for hub zone price preference for single hub zones or hub zone set-asides for two or more hub zones. The hub zone certification has been notoriously difficult which is why SBA has expanded and simplified the application. If you visit the SBA HubZone webpage, you will gain access to the new eligibility workbook tool and certification tip sheet. Members of the HubZone team answer questions on a weekly basis every Tuesday and Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time to help firms navigate the certification process. You may also email hubzone at sba.gov. Again, that is hubzone at sba.gov. There are two types of businesses that fall under the veteran assistance program. Those are the veteran owned small businesses or VOSBs and the service disabled veteran owned small businesses 
or SDV OSBs. Commodity procurement allows for SDV OSB set asides, and USDA has a 3% goal for SDV OSBs. Certification for VOSBs and SDV OSBs is a little different. If you are competing for contracts for the Department of Veteran Affairs or for the Federal Aviation Administration, then a company will need formal verification through the Veteran Affairs Center for Verification and Evaluation. This will change in 2023 when VOSB certification will switch from the Department of Veteran Affairs to SBA. Additional guidance will be provided at a later date. For all other government agency contracts, such as USDA, companies may self-certify in SAM. To qualify for the SDVOSB program, your business must be a small business according to SBA's size standards, it must be at least 51% owned and controlled by one or more service-disabled veterans. It must have one or more service-disabled veterans manage day-to-day -day operations who also make long-term decisions. And eligible veterans must have service-connected disability. And now let's move on to the women-owned small business. Under the Women-Owned Small Business Federal Contracting Program, there are women-owned small businesses or WOSBs and economically disadvantaged women-owned business, women-owned small businesses or EWOSBs, both of which are allowed to compete in specific set-asides based on their next codes. The list of eligible Next codes for WOSBs and EDWOSBs are maintained by SBA. Currently, commodity procurement does, does have set asides for WOSBs, and USDA has a goal of 5% for awarding contracts to WOSBs. To become a certified WOSB or EDWOSB, you must apply through SBA's free online certification pro process at beta.certify.sba.gov. Again, that is beta.certify.sba.gov. Or be approved by an SBA third party. There are currently four organizations approved to certify WOSBs and EDWOSBs, which are El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, National Women Business Owners Corporation, U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce, and Women's Business Enterprise National Council. Each year, within 30 days of the anniversary of your certification, a company will be required to submit annual attestation or proof of meeting WOSB or EDWOSB requirements. Every three years, businesses must undergo a program examination conducted by SBA or a third party certifier. Now, in terms of resources, there are a number of resources you can reach out to as a small business for contracting assistance or assistance in applying for any of the socioeconomic categories through the SBA, such as the Small Business Development Centers and Veteran and Women's Business Centers. All of these contacts can be found on the SBA website. In addition, you can also visit the SBA website to find out more about mentorship through the SBA, through their program called SBA Mentor Protege Program. Apart from SBA, remember to also check out the US Women's Chamber of Commerce, Procurement Technical Centers or PTACs, which offer free assistance on government contracting, and the USDA Office of Small and Disadvantaged Businesses, Business Utilization or OSDEBU. The bottom line here is that there are a lot of people out there that are ready to help. All it really takes is a call or an email to get them started.
And of course, we would be remiss if we did not mention myself and Andrea as points of contact if you have any questions at all. At all. While we are not part of SBA, we can certainly lead you in the right direction. So we have our email here, newvendor at usda.gov. Both Andrea and myself monitor this inbox. Again, that is newvendor at usda.gov. And now we can open it up for questions. Okay, so now we're going to open it up for questions. Um, are there other opportunities beyond USDA bids for SBA and hub zone companies? And the answer to that is yes, there are opportunities for small businesses and the different socioeconomic categories in every federal agency. Um, it's not just USDA specific. So uh, Department of Defense would have small business set-asides or have 8 day offers. Um, it wouldn't just be for, um, it's, it's not just USDA specific, it's every agency. Next question, will we have access to the slides? Yes, absolutely. We will be sending out a copy of the slides along with a copy of the recording. Um, in the near future to all of our participants. Um, and hopefully we'll be, we will be posting uh, a recording of this webinar to our website. Okay, for the woman-owned business, if the NAICS code of the primary company is not a USDA approved code, how can a company bid on a contract? Well, if we recall several slides ago, you can have more than one NAICS codes in your SAM. So if one of the codes that um, commodity procurement uses um, does not necessarily fall in line with what your company does, or if your company has multiple NAICS codes, let's say you do, you know, you do beef and you also do flour for some reason, um, you can have different NAICS codes listed in your SAM registration. Okay, next question. Can you serve as a subcontractor or subcontract to a veteran owned company and still qualify for a set aside? Okay, well, if we recall for commodity procurement program, we don't have veteran owned small business set asides. We have service disabled veteran owned small business set asides. Um, but also let's say if you, I mean, you can subcontract with the veteran owned company or a service disabled veteran, like, okay, let me back, let me, let me retrace this. So you as a subcontractor, let's say you're working with a service disabled veteran owned small business. Um, if you are working with them, they would qualify for the set aside. You as a subcontractor would just have your partnership with that service disabled veteran owned small business. Now, there is a caveat there where any small business that is working with the subcontractor, the subcontractor must also be a small. A small must match with a small. So if a small, let's say a small woman owned small business wants to work with a large uh, 
many, uh, a large manufacturer, a large subcontractor, they would not qualify for uh, that woman-owned small business set aside because they're working with a large business. If they were working with a small subcontractor, then they would. Okay. If you have two small businesses bidding and one is a hub zone, does the hub zone business get priority? Yes, question mark. So the way in which this works is this. So if you have one hub zone, remember you would get a hub zone price preference. Now that price preference would go against all the full and open portion of a contract. So what does this mean? This means that if we have a contract, if we have a bid invitation, that is 50% small business set aside, and we have one hub zone competing, that means that the hub zone can submit a price preference and the price preference would be competing against the full and open portion of the bid invitation. So I know that sounds a little confettled, but um, so I guess my answer to that would be, if you have two small businesses bidding on a portion of a contract, and if you have another portion of that contract that is full and open, then yes, the hub zone business would be bidding and would get price preference against the full and open. And the way in which the price preference works is that it must be um, the contract specialist or contracting officer will look at the lowest bid, then take a look at the hub zone price preference and the hub zone price preference must be 10% within range of that lowest bid. So I hope that clears that up. I know that was a lot of information. The next question. So if you are an 8A certified company, you can bid on any USDA contract, even if there are not two suppliers. Yes. So we do have, you know, remember that rule of two for for set-asides, and that includes 8A set-asides. However, if you are one 8A, you don't have to necessarily, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about an 8A set-aside. What you would do is you would submit an 8A offer. Okay, and the last question we have here I'm seeing, what does within reason mean when pertaining to small business set aside for price preferential on a bid? So I think what you're referring to is, you know, within reason is with regards to pricing for small businesses. Small businesses, um, I think what we're looking for is, is the pricing. And if the pricing is not some astronomical price. You know, you have to remember that this is government contracting and the companies that are awarded have to have prices that are the most advantageous to the government. Now we do allow some leeway in that, of course, with small businesses, because we understand small businesses are going to have a little bit more of a price, um, a higher price. However, they shouldn't be something like absolutely absurd, you know, just Let's say we have the, you know, a large business doing like $5 a case. Um, and the small business is going to come in and say, well, I can do it for $200 a case. No, it's got to be within reason. So there has to be some type of wiggle room, obviously, but no like crazy large prices, I think is what we're getting to there. All right. So I do not see any more questions. So if there are no more questions, we're going to conclude this presentation. We appreciate everyone's participation. There are some excellent questions here. Thank you so much. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.